Jakarta City volunteers and Indonesia government care for workers handling the burial services. City Philippine chapter hosts rice distributions for families in need while keeping social distances. Welcome to Die Headlines, I'm Maggie Tsai. Thank you for joining us. In Jakarta, Indonesia, they are the funeral workers who handle the burial services for those who contract the novel coronavirus. They face a lot of stress, especially with the influx of their work right now. To lift their spirits, the Indonesian government and Siji are hosting a distribution after Ramadan to express the government's gratitude and Siji's care. The entire process was filmed and made into a video to reveal the stress of a burial worker. Sebentar lagi bulan puasa. Pengen terawih berjemaah. We are entering Ramadan and we want to join everyone for prayers at night. We want to enjoy our Ramadan. Please stay at home. It's only 14 days. 14 hari. Because we want to participate in Ramadan, I beg you, we must bury about a dozen people who died from the novel coronavirus each day. I beg you, we have family too, we have neighbors and our own lives, and this isn't the life we want to have. We don't want to continue life like this, we want to socialize with other people. Please, I beg you, stay at home. Kami hadir di sini bersama Seci dan kami jajaran sekretar presiden berstaf staf ingin berbagi. The presidential secretary department and Tsuji wanted to do something for the funeral burial workers, and those goods may not be much, but it comes from our caring hearts for you. We hope you can carry out your job well and continue to wash your hands. It's probably best to install some mobile washing stations. This way, it can protect your health and you can continue working. Alhamdulillah, bapak-bapak semua yang ada di sini, sadar-sadar membawa keberkahan. They are in charge of burying the dead whether the dead had COVID-19 or not. I hope this care package can help encourage the workers for their dedication and bring a renewed sense of spirit into their tedious work. I hope they continue with endurance and diligence at their thankless job. In Taitung, Taiwan, many people are doing their best to keep help prevent the spread of the epidemic. For instance, postmen work hard to deliver masks and alcohol spread to pharmacies and health centers. City Foundation has worked with entrepreneurs and sisters of St. Mary's Hospital to deliver vegetarian lunch boxes to Taitung Post Office to show their appreciation. <laughs> During the epidemic, masks and alcohol spray are delivered to pharmacies and health centers by postmen who go to work early. To thank the postmen, City Foundation and St. Mary's Hospital Sisters deliver snacks to Taidong Post Office. Entrepreneurs love. DG brothers and sisters have interacted with them for a long time. We thank the post office for giving us the opportunity to show our appreciation. The service area of Taitung Post Office reaches as far as Darren Township, which is one and a half hour right away. The postmen shoulder heavy responsibilities, but they're willing to give of themselves. Do something for Taiwan and our fellow countrymen. 
This is how our post office serves our residents. Feels good to have people care for us. We should speak good words, words that calm people's minds so society can be filled with positive energy. The Tsuji Foundation also gives out 85 vegetarian lunch boxes to the staff of Taitung Post Office. They hope they can work together to prevent the spread of the epidemic. Tsuji Thailand Chapter has donated masks and protective gowns to hospitals who have formerly worked with Tsuji in free clinics. Volunteers say that they first donate protective supplies to these hospitals, but if other hospitals also apply for epidemic prevention supplies, they will help them as well. Tsuji Thailand Chapter finally received the first batch of overseas epidemic prevention supplies. Combined with the supplies purchased locally, the items are immediately donated to different hospitals. Protective clothing and masks are hard to obtain. Yesterday, we received the first batch of masks. We are ready to deliver them to hospitals who have helped us with our free clinics for refugees. We encourage our medical personnel with these epidemic prevention supplies. As medical people, if we do not have protective materials, how can we take care of the patients? The supplies are donated to four hospitals, Ramadi Bodhi, Saraji, Bombay General Hospital and Guantabang Hospitals. They've all worked with city in free clinics in the past. Without adequate protective supplies, our medical staff would have a higher chance of being infected. If a staff is infected, there is one less person on the medical team and one more patient. As a result, there are less people caring for the patients. I appreciate every Tsuji volunteer service. They provide protective supplies and dedicate their time, supporting the staff of Bampankyo General Hospital. Finding an epidemic on the front line, the medical personnel needs to take care of themselves before they can safeguard the patients. Volunteers have delivered the protective supplies with love. Tsuji has followed strict standards to check the quality of protective equipment and only chooses qualified masks to deliver to those in need around the world. Meanwhile, as China begins school, volunteers deliver masks to support laborers and their families. Tsuji volunteers went to the mask factory to check on their facilities and the quality of mask materials. We pick one mask from every pack to check the quality. We follow the master's teachings to put ourselves near the shoes and to give the best to those in need. After the test, volunteers pack the mask and put the Tsuji logo stickers on each of them. These packages are going to be delivered to five countries in the world. There are 430,000 masks in 215 boxes. We pray sincerely that everyone in the world can be healthy and safe. In Jiangsu, labor families are also facing financial difficulties after their children begin school, as schools requires two masks a day. The epidemic has made them lose their homes and some families have three to four kids. The masks in the store are 2.5 renminbi each, so one kid will cost 5 renminbi a day. Three to four kids are about 15 to 20 renminbi, which is about 3 US dollar a day. That's a big cost for labor families. City volunteers deliver their children's masks to two elementary schools. I believe their compassion can be passed on to children in need through schools. Your participation may make students feel different and let them know there are some people that care about us. The power of great love has survived the epidemic and given warmth to society. In Malaysia, many hospitals are in need of protective clothing to help protect the medical personnel. Cadets and volunteers are rushing to make protective clothing, including gowns, shoes, covers, and head covers. As they deliver their protective clothing to different hospitals, they also gave medical staff a letter from Master Jing Yan, which inspired many of them. Tsuji volunteer Yan Tui Liang has set a goal of making 50 protective clothes in a day. She has utilized her outstanding skills in sewing. When I was sewing the bands, I connected them. I've sewn 144 bands. I simply separated them and sewed them like this. This is faster because we got used to it. The protective clothing is in urgent need. If we did not set a goal for ourselves, we might slack off. Because sewing clothes strains the eyes, so your eyes will get tired. If you don't set a goal, you will slack off. 
The fabric for making protective clothing needs to be cut. The owner of the cloth factory has lent her electric cutter and manpower. As you cut them with your hands, you can only do a little. Within two or three days, we can cut 1,000 pieces for you. Wouldn't that be faster? We thought these are for doctors, which is a good deed. I am willing to help them. Malaysia is under a movement restriction order, and hospitals are in need of epidemic prevention supplies. Qin Chenhua, who is a nephrologist, knows it well. Currently, buying them is difficult as many places are purchasing epidemic prevention supplies. Protective clothing is more complicated as they are made by people with sewing experiences. So we are fortunate that in Siji, many brothers and sisters know how to sew. Volunteers quickly delivered the finished protective clothing to different hospitals. As we deliver the epidemic prevention supplies to hospitals or sanitation bureau, we also give them Master Jianyan's letter. Their response is that the master's words are heartwarming. It inspires them. City volunteers take actions to support the medical personnel who are safeguarding the patients' lives and fighting the epidemic. The Philippines chapter is still planning on rice distribution to their residents during this time of the epidemic. However, the rules of the government is to be obeyed, including the number of people and distancing. Our distribution is limited to 800 people, with the army also assisting the process. A bag of rice weighs 25 kg. The men are able to carry them, while the volunteers assist the elderly and women. The Chief Philippines chapter plans to distribute over 80,000 bags of rice during the epidemic hoping that everyone is able to receive at least a bag of rice. Last time, Tsuji came to comfort us and gave us a bag of rice. This time, we are facing another crisis, and Tsuji came again. This big bag of rice can sustain us for a month. We are very lucky. In order to prevent mass gathering, every distribution is limited to 800 people. The floors are marked and volunteers spread prevention awareness and pray for the health of everyone. In Quezon and Tondo City, the army even assisted the distribution. I'm just an ordinary worker. During this period, we're trying our very best to lead a better life. Tsuji's assistance this time means a lot to us. I'm very grateful towards Tsuji. Whenever there is a disaster, Tsuji will assist with the victim's needs. With the pandemic spreading globally, Tsuji still came here to assist us. With great love, we can all do good deeds. In these streets in the Philippines, the residents are carrying Tsuji's love on their shoulders, and with the turn of hands, they are repaying the world's blessings. The Philippines continue to implement movement restriction orders in San Juan City in Metro Manila. Tsuji has been carrying out charitable activities for many years in the community, and during this critical moment, an epidemic continued to host a distribution of rice to 3,000 households. Just how long of a line is needed to distribute aid to 3,000 households? This is San Juan City in the Philippines. An outdoor aid distribution is taking place and advanced preparations were implemented. Whether sitting or standing, the social distance was properly maintained. With Tsuji volunteers, military police and local volunteers working together to maintain order and protect safety at the distribution site. Social 
<laughs> This bag of rice is 25 kilogram, and at a minimum, I can feed my family for a month. Thank you. Even the mayor of the city joined the distribution for the first time. The Suji Foundation and the San Juan City government has had a close relationship for many years. However, this is the first time that I joined as a volunteer. I'm grateful for this opportunity, and I hope to continue working to help other people. On this truck is a large pile of rice, which is being transferred and sent down to the people in need. During this epidemic, all this compassion and help is very much needed. Fanghua Ziji volunteers have been promoting the vegetarian campaign since March, and a company in the community has begun to offer free vegetarian lunch for its workers. Volunteers also deliver the lunch boxes they made to the Taipei City Traffic Office. Who is willing to embrace vegetarianism? Employees of this logistic company all look forward to their lunch every day. The lunch bag is plentiful, and sometimes I bring it back to share with my husband. Each of us share half of the meal with some fermented bean curd. It's enough for both of us. Since I've learned about the vegetarian campaign, I've been hoping all of my colleagues can join and stop killing animals. During the serious epidemic, we hope this can make the society peaceful and calm soon. Wanghua Ziji volunteers have started to promote the vegetarian campaign since March, and many has participated. I felt that stopping to kill animals on our table is convenient, fast, and realistic way. Actually, all the vegetarian animals have flat teeth. We humans also have flat teeth, so I think we're supposed to eat vegetarian diets. Some reports said that this epidemic had caused many people unable to go out, but the ecosystem has actually benefited from it. That means human was damaging the nature. The cooking volunteers try to change the dishes every day, hoping to balance the new chance, the taste, and the presentations. Many staffs in my team are vegetarian. I felt that they are more energetic than me. If eating the vegetarian diet can make one healthier, I think we should encourage our staff to do so. No matter you do it for yourself, for the earth, or for all living creatures, follow your instincts and do the right thing. To promote vegetarianism, Tsuji volunteers not only make vegetarian lunch boxes for people, they also demonstrate ways to cook vegetarian food. In Taishan, Tsuji volunteers held a vegetarian food cooking lesson at their recycling station. The participants not only asked questions, they also took notes attentively. At Liming Recycling Station in Taishan, kitchen volunteers are busy preparing ingredients to cook vermicelli. To promote vegetarianism, volunteers do not just cook for everyone, they also teach everyone how to cook. If the person who cooks at home cannot cook tasty vegetarian food, how can she inspire the family to adopt a vegetarian diet? So, we thought about ways to promote vegetarianism. We hope that through this activity, people will inspire their family to embrace vegetarianism. On this day, Tsiri Wantu Li Susha is demonstrating ways to cook vegetarian vermicelli. I like vegetarian vermicelli and I want to learn ways to cook it so I can make it for my family. I also have another wish. I want to cook it for my friends. Colonally, if someone says he wants to eat vermicelli, I will buy the ingredients and go to his house to cook it. I will also teach him how to cook so that he can cook it at home. Volunteers mindfully teach the steps in cooking the vegetarian dishes. Some people ask questions and even take notes. I've adopted a vegetarian diet for more than 40 years. My husband has also followed me and embraced vegetarianism for more than 10 years. If you want your family to go meatless, you need to cook mindfully. I also teach my daughter and daughter-in-law ways to cook vegetarian food. I inspire them to adopt a vegetarian diet. Volunteers are taking the lead to promote vegetarianism so more people can eat healthy while also pray that the epidemic can end soon. 
discussion is the host of the special musical concert with musical instruments made from daily items like kitchen utensils, PD bottles, and wood from the valley nearby. Children and adults have enjoyed the fun and learned that simple things can all make beautiful sounds. <laughs> The children's songs accompanied with the musical instruments. Can you believe these are all made from recycled materials? Some were PED bottles or drug bottles with rice in it, and there were also pots and kitchen utensils. Even this wood from the Jingzi hall can also make a nice sound. These items we can easily find in our home have turned into musical instruments that made wonderful music. Children and adults all had fun. I felt that the music can go with some recycled materials, and it's great that we can play this with children at home. I feel like going back to my childhood today in the class because I used to have a group in music class like this when I was a child. If we use recyclable musical instruments, the children felt differently and they'll enjoy it more. He said that I have all these items in my house that I can play with, so I don't need to buy them. This musical concert has not only extended the value of things, but also enriched the minds and souls of all participants. Dalian City volunteers helped the blind care recipient Ling Sha, whose family cleaned their house and organized their yard. The government office has also come to help pay for the tiles so they can have a beautiful garden outside their house. The tiny room is dark and messy. This is where Ling Shao, whose family lives. He is blind and has uremia, and his father also has mobility issues. His mother is exhausted caring for them both. Last July, city volunteers came to clean their house and improve their environment. However, the outdoor yard is still rocky and filled with miscellaneous items, leaving only one way out, which Rory volunteers. Our job is to destroy the coal chute and clean it out afterward. There are some coal and heat pipes in it, so we must be careful. In April, a volunteer's brother tools to clean the coal chute and move out miscellaneous items. Now the yard looks brand new. My son can see if the road is bumpy. It will be inconvenient for them to walk and sometimes do a trip. I've wanted to fix it for a long time. Volunteers were looking for used tires to pave the road, so they contacted the government office and received help. A day later, workers paved the tiles and decorated a small garden for the family. Now when they walk out of the house, the yard is no longer messy, but now beautiful and warm. City U.S. headquarters have delivered the antivirus supplies to liaison offices, hospitals and nursing homes across the state. Take a look and see you next time.